Hi, welcome to How to Repair. In this video, we're going to be entering test mode, or sometimes known as service mode, on hot point and intercept washing machines manufactured roughly from 2019 onwards. This will apply to many different models of machine. If your display looks similar to this, and you've got different wash functions going all the way around the dial, but if you add them up, they should come to 16. Now, I will actually put all the relevant models in the description below that this applies to, and I encourage you, if you get into test mode, please add your model number to the comments below to assist other people in the future. Uh, I can tell you now that this applies to the hot point range, starting with NSW on the model number, and it also applies to the Interset NX range, and this has multiple different model numbers, and I'm not going to read them out for you. I'm also running a smart meter here, so you can actually see what's going on. In other words, what wattage is being pulled while we go through the test cycle. It takes approximately 10 minutes to go through the test cycle, and I'll show you in detail what is actually happening, what components it's testing, and also how to diagnose problems with your machine if a part is not working correctly. To explain this in layman terms so everybody understands, I'm going to ask you to treat the dial as if it was a clock face. Because we are only using the top portion of the actual dial to enter test mode, and I have to do this quite quickly to actually enter test mode. So we'll call the top one 12 o'clock, Eco 40 60 1 o'clock, Cotton 2 o'clock, and Anti Stain 40 11 o'clock. That's the easiest way for everyone to understand how to enter test mode. So first, machine off, turn the dial to the mixed wash. Now, you may have to do this a couple of times to try and get into test mode, because if you don't do it in the allocated period of time, or you make a mistake, it will time out and not allow you to enter test mode. So, 12 o'clock position, turn the power on. As Soon as it comes on, turn it to one, turn it off. Turn it back to 12, turn it on. Turn it to the 2 o'clock position, turn it off. Turn it back to the 12 o'clock position, turn it on. Turn to the 11 o'clock position, press the start button immediately. SAT will actually show up. A lot of people misinterpret this as SAE. This is the test procedure. And the first functionality that actually happens is the actual machine empties and the pump is active to make sure no water is in the machine. The door lock will be energized. And as you see here, if you do have an error on your machine, it will show the last stored error code on this machine. Now this machine, I did a previous video on how to repair an F05 error code, which is the F05 water pipe blockage or pump issue. Sometimes on these machines, by the way, I've put a note in here, it can be to do with a pressure switch because I have seen some engineers say they've had F05 and it was a pressure switch fault, but that is not from the manufacturer, that is just notes from myself. So, if you wanted to clear the error code, you could just press the start button and come out of diagnostic procedure. This then should have cleared the error code, and when we enter test mode again, then it will actually sh show no error. Now, entering test mode again, 12 o'clock position, turn it off, turn it back on, turn to position 1, off, turn it back to 12, on, position 2, off, back to 12, on. To 11, press start. Now there's no water in the machine now, but the machine pump has just kicked in just to check that there's no water in the machine. Sometimes this comes on, sometimes it does not at the beginning of the cycle. It will now go into a fill mode and test each individual water valve for the functionality and making sure the water comes through to the correct compartment. I'm actually going to take the door out of this machine now to show you where the water is coming from in each compartment. I've actually got the machine perfectly level and the water is set to a set pressure where it's not going to jump out of the machine when I take the soap box out. I'll just film this bit for you. To take the soap box out, do support the front panel and then unclip it from the side, unclip it from there and the whole compartment will come away. 
Engineers in the field have many years of experience and they're able to determine what's going on with the machine when entering diagnostic mode easily. General public does not know what they're looking at on some occasions and understanding what wattage and what function should be happening at certain points is the way that you will easily be able to diagnose problems with your machine. So quickly let me explain the wattages that we should be seeing. The control panel when turned on should be drawing around 2 watts of power. The water valves will be drawing about 8 watts of power each. The pump under load will be drawing somewhere in the region of 20 to 25 watts. The heating system, depending on the size of heating system fitted, will be somewhere between 1700 watts and 2 kilowatt. I believe this machine is 1750 or 1800 watt. Um, the motor will pull power depending on the load capacity in the machine and also what RPM state it's trying to get to. The faster it goes, the more wattage it will pull. The heavier the load, the more wattage it will pull. So understanding this is a very important thing when entering diagnostic mode to understand what should be happening. So let's go into diagnostic mode. Dial 12 o'clock, turning it off, making sure it's clear, on. One o'clock, off. 12 o'clock, on. Two o'clock, off. 12 o'clock, on. 11 o'clock, press start. We have now entered diagnostic mode. Opening the soap drawer, which should be there, you're going to be able to see the water coming through on one valve, then the other valve, then both valves together, depending on what, what model of washing machine you have. As the water rises in the machine, this will tell the pressure switch what level of water is in the machine and then will activate the heating system and test the NTC sensor. Then it will go into other test procedures which we'll talk about when I've got more time. One water valve has come on, so we have 2 watts of power plus the 8 watts, we're drawing 10 watts of power. The other water valve will now come on and it will go back up to 10 watts of power. Then both water valves will be activated and this will normally draw 16 to 18 watts of power. Both water valves now have been activated and we're pulling just under 18 watts of power. This will continue filling until the machine detects water in there and it now turned the heating system on. We are pulling 1780. This is the heating element plus the display plus the two water valves. This then will once, sorry, this when it reaches a certain level of water will now start doing an anti-clockwise rotation and then a clockwise rotation. And it will continue doing this test for either a preset period of time or until it reaches a certain temperature. Water level now is just covering the bottom of the drum and we're doing a rough 45 RPM anti-clockwise rotation. The machine stops and then does a clockwise rotation. Heating system still on and now you can see the variant in the wattage being drawn because it's actually turning the drum at 45 rpm. Of course when it goes into a spin speed later it will be pulling more wattage on the motor when it comes to that point. This will continue for about four or five minutes uh, and then it will go into a motor test sequence. So I've got a little bit of time to talk now. Uh, these machines come in different levels of weight from 7 kilo up to 10 kilo I believe and they all have error codes on them whether they're washer dryers or washers and these error codes are preset. They either are shown in the display with a digital message either F05 which you saw earlier or on some models of the machines they use a binary code system where they do not have a digital display. This means that it uses a binary code system to determine an error. For example, F05 would be number 1 LED lit up with number, four LED, uh, number 3 LED lit up because the LEDs work in a sequence of 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16. This means that it's adding 1 to the number 1 LED and number 3 LED that's lit up which equals number uh, 4 and it combines those two numbers to determine that the LED value is 5 and therefore it is indicating it is an F05 error. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, error code F01 is an electronic circuit board fault. 
F02 is a motor fault. This may be an induction motor or it could be a brush motor depending on the model of machine you have. F03 is a temperature sensor fault which is next to the heating element. This sends the information to the program in ohms. This then determines the ohms reading to what temperature that sensor is reading. I've done a detailed video on these to show you how they work. Now you'll notice now that the heater has cut off and it will continue rotating clockwise and anti-clockwise and then empty which it's doing now. The pump is under load and you can see that we're pulling roughly 21 watts of power. This will now empty and the machine then will go into a spin and build up going through the different variations of the spin level. So going back to the error codes, F05, which I've already done a video on, is related to the pump. And F11 also is related to the pump, but they are two separate error codes. F05 is basically unable to empty in an allocated period of time. It means the pump is detected and should be working, but the machine is not able to empty. F11 means that the pump is open circuit, which is a different type of error completely. This is an electrical fault. F06 is related to the door lock. F07 is an electronic circuit board fault on the heating circuit side. It is possible that a, a relay on the circuit board may have become faulty or bad wiring or the actual circuit board is faulty. F8 uh, is a heater fault. Again, there are other videos on our YouTube channel to assist you in replacing heating elements and also testing them. F09 is a software fault. F12 is an electronic control fault. These last two are related to the circuit board. I'm going to stop there because you can see now that the pump has kicked in, the motor is building up and we're pulling roughly 146 watts of power under no load. Now, of course, if you had five kilos of washing in the machine, therefore it would be pulling more power. But because the test cycle has always got to be run with no clothing in it, this is why it's a lower level than it would be when there's a load of clothing in there. Uh, where am I? F13 is on washer dryers, and this is a dryer temperature sensor fault, and on washer dryers only. This is normally the sensor at the top of the heating system that is detecting the airflow going through the machine and this can become faulty. F15 is a heater control fault on washer dryers again. Uh, this could be something to do with the circuit board or the heating element or one of the thermostats protecting the system if fitted on the machine. Uh, F16 is a drum lock position. It's on the Hot Points official website, but this is saying it's for top loaders only. And F18 is an internal data error on the software. That is all the error codes, and I have lots of videos on our YouTube channel to assist you with other error codes and also on how to replace components on the machine. Everything from replacing a door seal, a pump, uh, on certain machines I've done videos on replacing the drum, one of the things I don't like about the Hotpoint and Intercept machines is over the last 10 years now they have been producing sealed drums which I'm really against because that is building in obsolescence on the machine and it's not only not good for you the consumer it's bad for the environment as well but other manufacturers now are starting to go back to producing machines which are serviceable which is a good start but this greed that occurs in the world with actually making you, the consumer, buy a new washing machine every four or five years is a bit of a disgrace. It's quite amazing. In the United Kingdom alone, we are consuming three and a half million washing machines a year. If an average washing machine lasts five to six years and you take approximately 28 million households, that's how many machines are being brought into the country each year. Not only have we got the waste with regards to the fuel costs of bringing them in, we've got consumerism of these machines actually having to be disposed of and recycled instead of repaired. So we're now reaching pretty much the maximum RPM level and she's pulling roughly 200, uh, 250 watts of power. It will sit there for a couple of minutes and then shut down the pump is active, you can hear that running in the background. 
and I'm not too sure how long this will go on for I didn't put a stop clock up there to actually time it so I might waffle a little bit too much but uh, you'll have to put up with me on that and there you can hear the machine shutting down the motor has de-energized this will not stop until the drum has finished rotating then it will deactivate the door lock allowing you to get in the machine and turn the machine off usually takes a few seconds and door click twice the door now can be opened the next time you turn the machine off and on again it will just go back to its normal functionality. Thank you very much indeed for watching this video. I hope it helps you rectify the problem with your machine. Please remember to buy the parts off us, and if we really helped you, you can always donate and click on the Buy Polar Beer page and donate to the website. Thanks very much indeed for watching.